Hi guys, it's Legend of All 101 here. This time with a glass spoiler movie review. Okay, so I saw this movie a couple of days ago. I was supposed to do it the day after, but I had to work, so so I was doing it now for you guys. So I'm going to follow in the usual places: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. But Twitter is the main place you're gonna find me. Thumbs the video up, subscribe, and share the video. So glass. The build-up for the ages, the Infinity War of thrillers. Okay, so I've seen Unbreakable, I've seen Split, and now Glass is here. So let's get into this. Remember to leave your comments in the comment section down below. I really want to know what you guys think as well. Give us some feedback, and I'll respond. So also turn notifications on as well. My next video to drop, so let's get into this movie. I thought this this ah oh, the way this movie was this movie was amazing. I loved this movie first off. It was very well done. M Night has their moments of brilliance. When he does something well, he does it really well. So let's get started. So basically he's set three weeks after the events of Split, after the second movie, James McAvoy's movie. Um so David Dunn, Bruce Willis' character, Mr. Unbreakable. Basically he's working with his son now, Joseph. And he's basically using his superhuman abilities to protect people. Basically these bunch of two guys are just like attacking people on the street. Just hitting people and just recording it. So you call it Superman Punch. I was like, oh Superman Punch, I was like, are you serious? It's attacking random people on the street. Old, young, doesn't matter. They're recording it, so... Basically, David, Bruce Willis' character, and his son have just been tracking people. Like every time they basically see a, any kind of threat or anyone's in danger, David just goes out and just attacks them. He's the overseer now. He's got a new name called the Overseer. So, he's like the overarching hero of the sea. Um, so, yeah. So, then basically, at the same time, you see Kevin's, Kevin's character. Basically, James McAvoy's character just running around with different personalities. He basically's got some girls tied, a group of um, Chile just tied up. And basically, basically, they start to realize because basically, James, um, Joseph has tracked some people, people have gone missing around the area. So, which was Kevin, the, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Split himself, the beast. So, basically, David and Joseph are currently fixated on him. And yeah, because the horde. And Joseph narrows down Kevin's location. And David discovers where he's currently operating by intentionally seeking him out. So basically, he's, he's scoping this area out. Because his son's located this kind of triangle of where the um, happenings are happening. So people are getting stolen. Uh, so basically, David's walking around the place, bumping into people. To trying to get like a, a vision uh, type of sign. So I did that sign. Uh, yeah, so basically, whenever he touches someone, he gets a sense of who they are or what they've been doing. So that's how you can usually get the criminals and find where they are, hideouts and stuff like that. Um, David goes to free Kevin's hostages. So basically, he finds out where he is. So he goes to free the hostages now and confronts Kevin. Leading to David being attacked by Kevin's most powerful persona, the Beast. So basically, it's, it's, yeah. So basically, um, David runs into the Beast pretty early on in this movie, and <laughs> it was pretty impressive. It was pretty impressive. So, Beast just goes crazy, throwing tables around, just crawling on the walls. I was like, yo, the way the camera angle, the camera work was decent. This, the camera work was epic. So good. Um, yeah, so basically the ensuing fight spills out into the streets and leads to the eventual capture of both of them. So basically, they, they, <laughs> the Beast bear hugs David, Bruce Willis. And basically, <laughs> Bruce Willis just jumps out the window with De <laughs> with Kevin on his back. And they fall to the ground. So basically, the Beast is kind of confused. He's like, why can't I break this guy? Basically, he's unbreakable, obviously. You can't break him, so kind of like a stalemate going on 
But what I could gather, I think David was a bit stronger than the Beast. I feel. Um, that's what I got from it anyways. I was watching the movie throughout this, throughout this whole movie. I thought David was a bit stronger than the Beast. I feel, I felt. I felt. Um... So yeah, so basically they get captured, <laughs> captured by um, this psychologist, um, and then the, basically they get sent to a mental institution to get inspected. Um, where obviously they find out Mr. Glass is there as well, which I found interesting. As well. they were like, "What? What are you doing here, guy?" So then they were shot by that as well. So Doctor Ellie Staple, which is basically the person who in charge of this whole operation to try and convince them that they haven't got any powers and they're just regular people um but she she's she um is giving them three days to persuade david and kevin and elijah that they are normal people as i said before staple also knows that david's weakness is water and has a machine that forces the horde to switch identities effectively disarming the beast so yeah <laughs> Because basically he put him in a room with like some water, David in a room with water, water on that like cannon sh point right at him to basically induce the, the drowning effect. And basically Kevin's in a room with flashing lights that can switch his identity at a moment's notice. One flash, bow, new identity. One flash, new identity. So keeping the beast at bay. And Joseph, the son, and Mrs. Price um glasses mum and casey cook basically the love interests of kevin in a way i'd say that, yeah love, love, love interest one from the split um all visit at separate times um to see what they're doing but, but they fail to get through to them but they fail so each time he gets through a staple puts the three humans in one room for evaluation and poisons David in the horde with doubt of their abilities, accusing David of having the same ability as trained magicians and Dennis, a persona of the horde, of copying rock climbers and being shot by bad cartridges. See, yes, this is basically, <laughs> basically, she's in a room and tries to break them down mentally. So she goes to David, Bruce Willis's character, goes, "Yeah, but you, you've, you've got the mind of a magician. You've seen stuff on people's bodies, so you don't you can't miss this." whole clairvoyance you have is not real if you're such, you have a trained eye basically that's what she's just trying to break down david saying he's just great at observing observation so and then she goes to kevin split and goes yeah it's walking on walls this trained climbers can do it um you're just a, a, a strong man you know what i'm saying this is this is not you're not a superhuman you're not anyone special you know what i mean she, and yeah it's just crazy <laughs> and she goes oh mr glassy he's exceptional yeah yes yeah, basically exceptional mind yes but <laughs> you know what i'm saying you're not a super villain you see some of the comic books and you got carried away you know what i mean comic book is just a fantasy but she broke down all three of them and the evaluation attracts Elijah to the beast leading him to make his move so Elijah breaks into the horde cell to prepare them for the beast's awakening in and so to speak um so yeah so basically Elijah this a massive plan Samuel Jackson's character this massive plan of a breakout um but he gets captured at, at some point and has a surgery performed on him <laughs> but the surgery fails and Samuel Jackson's character awakens the beast and convinces him to battle David on the city's highest tower so basically he sees this um book booklet of like this tower being built just finished being built and it's still gonna be a massive opening and he wants David and Kevin to fight in that building and make everyone see that comic books are real if you know what I mean superhumans are real um, and then he turns attention to David so basically he gets to David now forced him to use the extent of his power to escape so basically he goes David I have to break down the metal door because David starts to die himself like he hasn't got any powers so then Elijah goes to him bro 
you have powers. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Um, in the gist. Um, basically, else Elijah will destroy the tower with people in it, if you know what I mean. So he's threatening David to use his powers. Because he wants to see David and Kevin face off. So everyone can see the fireworks. Um, then the Horde and David rematch outside the hospital and, and are eventually evenly matched until Staple intervenes. Yeah, because they have a massive fight outside. It's crazy. Anyone who's seen this movie, the lead-up scenes to the fights are, are amazing. They kind of have these standoffs. I love it. Mexican standoffs. Um, the action isn't the greatest. They're kind of just holding each other and throwing each other into stuff and running at each other. But it was it was, it was well done. It was well done. Um, I have to see more punches and kicks a bit more. A bit more um, fighting. If you know what I mean, a bit more hand-to-hand -hand combat, more just like more wrestling than anything else. More schoolyard wrestling, if you know what I mean, just grabbing people, throwing them like just like throwing them around, uh, like in the schoolyard, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it looked like, like big two big kids fighting each other, so it looked like. Um, and staple orders four armed men on each of superhumans, but David and the Beast fend them off. So basically, they get held off. The base come with these um, glass shields, all these um, yeah. You bulletproof shields and push them, try to push them, force them into like a corner. So David and Kevin, the beast, just push them off and <laughs> the beast is just throwing them up. <laughs> Lifting cars, it's crazy. David's throwing people in um containers and bending steel around the around the locks, locking people up. Saying, I'm saying I'm trying to save you guys, I'm trying to save you guys. So David's just trying to convince everyone that he's trying to save them. But they just see David as a threat as well. Um so, so basically Elijah, some of Jackson's character, just basically stokes the fire and tells the beast, wait, David's got a weakness. There's a water container right over there. And the beast gets the idea and throws him into like a water container. Um, but, but before that happens, Joseph, the son of David, or Bruce Wayne's character, reveals that <laughs> Elijah orchestrated the train crash that killed his dad, which has started this whole event. Elijah is basically the one who created the split Kevin and David Unbreakable. So Elijah is the key to all of this. He's the one who started everything and set everything to motion. Um, so after Kevin's father died, his abusive mother began torturing him. So that's why basically I tell you a story for speech personalities, stuff like that. Because his mum was a mega abusive to him, thus creating the multiple personality syndrome. So the beast thanks Elijah for creating him, but tells Mr. Glass that his purpose was to protect Kevin, but he cannot trust Mr. Glass. And he <laughs> broke part of, his, part of his shoulder, crouch, put his hand right in the Glass's shoulder, and thrust, palm thrust him right in the chest. Then the Glass is just throwing up blood. Um, then basically just grabs David and throws him into a water tank. So the David survives, but is mortally weakened. So basically, he's weakened now because he was in the water all the time. And the beast retreats and promises to finish him off at the tower. But as the beast leaves now, Casey confronts him and uses her compassion powers. She touches him, suppresses the beast, brings Kevin out. So she kind of has these abilities herself. That's why I realized in Split, I knew she had some kind of ability to suppress the beast she has. So it's confirmed in this movie. That she has a kind of uh she's a kind of empath in a way by touch she can calm you down to suppress any kind of emotion that you got and just keep you calm um so yeah um case comp increased compassion powers to uh, return kevin the control of his body because she wants something to talk to kevin because kevin's the main personality if you know what i mean he's the original personality so when staples men uh, gun down Kevin while wow, he's been weakened so he was in his, his base state shot him right in the stomach but Sarah Paulson throughout this whole movie is just like she plays this kind of ambiguous shady psychologist she played the part well she played it well but at the same time this movie gave you a lot of questions if you know what i mean but let me let me finish let me finish though so staple basically yeah yeah guns him down 
he's dying. Staple remarks as he drowned that he should have. She she wouldn't have let him left him alone if she could convince him that it was normal. But that beast ruined it. Basically, he said he could control it. You should have controlled yourself. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have killed you. If you know what I mean. Um, and then as Elijah finally dies of his wounds from that palm strike, Staple tells him that comic books were wrong and about societies of supervillains obstructing superheroes and that a human Illuminati was the true mastermind of the obstruction of both heroes and villains. Staple deletes his security footage and even reports her mission as a success. So basically, she's saying, you lost. To Mr. Glass, you lost. So basically, they, they drown. They, they basically they drown David as well. As I said before, he gets drowned. Um, while <laughs> while he's drowning him, she, she um, touches David and goes, "Look at look look at this." And then they go with a whole flashback of this organization that she works for. Stops heroes and villains because she doesn't want any kind of powered people around. They all have to get erased. Only humans can survive. Normal humans. No superpowers allowed. So, and but unbeknownst to Staple, to Sarah Paulson's character, the cameras around the mental institution had previously been hacked by Elijah, and was streaming to his mother all along with Joseph and Casey, who were able to release it and the existence of those with superhuman abilities by extension to the public. Staple basically looking shocked and furious. She's looking angry. The public is now aware of superheroes and villains. Which she fought to hide, and the plans and roles of the secret society are destroyed. So basically, at the end of it, they, um, they're looking around Philadelphia, and Glass's mom, Mrs. Price, tells Joseph and Casey that it's the beginning of the other universe, as people and possibly other superhumans now know of their coexistence. So basically, know about each other now. So this starts a this is this is this creates way more questions than answers. Yo. I, was like, I was like, what is going on? I didn't say this is supposed to be an ending of a trilogy. But they're creating way more questions and answers. This this would have been fine if this was the middle movie. Was if this was in split, I'd be fine with that. The way see the shady organization in the background, see these these free free clovered tattoos on their hands. I don't mind about that. But this is this, this is like they're creating the, and then basically, and I heard that M Night doesn't want to do another another movie in this universe. So how the heck are they gonna leave us with this? It's a good ending, but what the heck? I think it'll be a fourth then. What the well, it, was a, it was a great it was a great movie though, I gotta admit, it was a great movie. Um I seriously wanna think know what everyone else thinks about this. Um in the comment section down below you can put it in there as well. Um because this was a thrill ride. Very well thought out, great plot, great script. Um but at the same time, it felt almost like the middle of a trilogy instead of the end of it, if you know what I mean. So it felt like, it felt like a, in the middle and then an end. It's almost like a massive open-ending ending, so it felt like to me. And all three of them died. Um, Mr. Glass died. Kevin died. David died. So all, all three main characters died in this movie. So that's how they ended it as well. All three died. And then just Rise of the Superpowers and the... In the universe has arrived, so I could always just branch off with them. I'm not always just branch off and do like a separate thing with power people, um, with human human abilities stretch their limit. You know what I mean? Limit breakers in the One Punch Man. If anyone knows about that, um, so yeah, I praise this movie. This gets a grade A plus. All the stuff that I've said about this movie, there's flaws about this movie. There's flaws. Um, the action scenes weren't up to scratch. They're okay. Um, yeah, I think it's just the action scenes kind of let it down, and uh, ending at the the ending. Uh, the organization. I want to know more about them. There was just, it was almost, that's what I'm saying. They ended it like the middle of a trilogy. It's like it's like it felt to me at the ending of a middle of a trilogy. So it felt like it felt like it was Lord of the first first Lord of the Rings that ended. That's what it felt like to me. Um, like there's still more to be told. So, A plus, still got an A plus though. This movie was amazing. M Night has another hit in his hands. I loved it. So, tell me, guys, speak in the comment section down below. 
Remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter's the main page you're going to find me. Thumbs the video up, guys. Make sure everyone sees it. Subscribe to your boy and share this video. Okay, so that's me talking about Glass 2019. It was epic. I enjoyed it. It was a thrill ride. Everyone should go see this movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it now. A plus. I'm done. Peace.